Hey guys, welcome to Homeschool With Me. So today I'm gonna go over some of my favorite math manipulatives. I love math manipulatives. I love making math fun. Who doesn't wanna have fun when they're teaching math? My kids do so much better when it's like hands on and there's stuff to show them it and, and visually showing them math concepts and that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna show you my favorites. I have tons more and I will do more videos on math manipulatives because I'm a sucker for math manipulatives. If I see one, I will buy it. It's a problem. I have a problem. So let's get started. And this is for K through fifth. So there's some that are a little bit younger and some that are a little bit older. So stay tuned if you're just like, I have a fifth grader. I'm not gonna need anything for these. I don't need counting bears. But I have some that help with fractions and multiplication and division. So keep watching. I'm going to link all of the stuff that I'm showing you today down below so you can go down and grab it if there's something that you're like, I have to have that. If you're like me and you're a math manipulative aholic, that's the thing. I feel like there should be a support group for my addiction. Okay, so we're going to start off with your tried and true counting bears. I got these kind on Amazon. Um, Saxon Math does have a math manipulative kit that has these, however, they don't have as many colors. And these have 102 in them. And the reason they have 102 in them is because your children are gonna lose at least two. I feel like if they think my kid's only gonna lose two of these, they are underestimating how much a child can lose. We like to use these for counting, color sorting, because there are lots of colors, and ordinal positions. So we'll do like stories like the bears lined up, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, so they know the ordinal position. So there's lots of things you can use counting bears for. We use them for graphing, story problems, addition problems. You can use these for anything, so I really like these. These are math puzzles. They're just little puzzle pieces that kind of fit together. So one of them is you count them and then you find the number, and only this number fits this, so they're not all like generic. There are like right and wrong, and if it's wrong, it's not gonna fit, which is nice because it makes it more self-guided that way. And then they go up in difficulty a little bit. They have basic addition and basic subtraction with pictures. It's a little bit easier. It's real good for kindergarten, first grade now. And even preschool, because I mean, we've used it for a while and we've used it to teach counting and then number recognition. Another thing we use when we're teaching 3D shapes, names of 3D shapes, I like to do things like, oh, go get an ice cream cone and that's a cone and stuff like that. But sometimes it's just easy to be able to pull it out of the closet and explain that this is a sphere versus just being like, it's a circle like a ball and getting a ball, you can just pull your manipulative shapes out. And so they have lots of different ones, but they're really fun because they have all different kinds of 3D shapes. So that's really fun to have on hand when you're teaching something like that, when they can hold it in their hand while you're talking about it. Hey, guys, why do my kids lose everything? So we got these out the other day for Hiram's class, and we had all of them. We had them all, I don't know, four days ago. We had all of these. And now we're missing half of them. Like, this is ridiculous. There's supposed to be 10 of these. There's five. I have half of the blues are missing. So my kids take them because they're real fun to build with. They're really fun to build because you can, like, move them around and they click in different places. These are linking cubes. We use them for lots of different things. We'll use them for like a visual bar graph so you can see it. We use it for patterning so you can do like every other color. We use them for counting. We use them for basic addition and subtraction stories. We use them for ordinal positions. We use them for anything I can think of. I will use these. These are a must have. If you do not have these or if you're out here like trying to figure out what you're putting together a kindergarten or preschool curriculum, these are so great. And I even still use them with Malia in third grade. Like if we're struggling with a concept, sometimes I'll pull these out because sometimes she's like, oh, I know how to show this to you with our linking cubes. This is how I teach my kids how to tell time. It's really simple. The thing I like about this clock is you cannot move the time by pushing the hour hand. You can only move it by doing the minutes. And I like that because it's a tactile way to show them like this doesn't just move without this moving. So it shows them how a real clock works. This moves, then makes that move, which I really like. It's got nice big numbers. This thing is sturdy. I like this one. Some people do two clocks, like a teacher one and a kid one, and you'll set the clock time in the morning, and then they have to set it to the same thing and write the digital clock. And they do that for their morning meeting kind of time. And that's a fun idea. I've never really done that. I've always just been like, okay, show me this time, show me that time. We just get it out when we're working on telling time, but I do like this one. 
When Malia got into a little bit of a harder math level, there were less manipulatives to go along with it. But I have found some that I really like. One of them that I really like, and I use these as a kid actually, is they're called math wrap-ups. And so they just have, this is the multiplication one, so it's one times, two times, three times, four times. It goes all the way up to 10 times. And what you do is, it says start here, and you take your string, and you start there, and you go four times one is four. Two times one is two. And then you just kind of keep wrapping it. So one of the reasons that this is so self-guided is that on the back, there are these raised, there's a raised plastic lines that show you where the string should go. So if you get it wrong, it's not going to be in the right spot. So you can check, the kid can check on the back if they got all their answers right. And if they didn't, they can go back and check their answers to see what the correct answer is. So it's very self-guided. I love these. So they have these for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to show you is double-sided magnetic fraction circles. So fractions and percentages can be kind of a jump for some kids and it's really nice when you can show that to them in a really visual way that's easy and you can just pull out of the closet because sometimes I don't want to do a craft. Sometimes I just do not want to do a craft. I just want to pull something out that can explain it to them visually and they can hold it in their hand and that we're done. Like that's all I want. So you have these, they're magnetic too, which is nice. So if you have like a, a whiteboard that's magnetic or a magnet board, it works really well. But it's a quarter of a circle and it says a quarter. Also, when they get a little bit older, it shows percentages on the back too. So it's a quarter of a circle and it shows all four pieces. And then like, you know, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth has the fraction written on it. They have a lot of different fractions in this. So they have a whole, they have half, they have a quarter, they have a fifth, an eighth, a tenth, a sixth, and a twelfth. And they do have a third. So there's so many things you can do. It's fractions and percentages, which I like. And, then, and they're magnetic. So you can use them, put them up on their magnet board, teach fractions and percentages. Those are some of my favorite math manipulatives. I have tons more. Like we've discussed, I am addicted to math manipulatives. So I will definitely do another video. If there's a math concept that you guys have been struggling with and you need a math manipulative for it, comment below because I can probably give you a link to one that will work for you. Comment below if you guys have a math manipulative that you absolutely love because I always need more. And like this video if you want more videos like this and make sure you guys subscribe so you guys don't miss all the other videos that we're doing and all the other tips and tricks that I send out.